You were prom queen because you were popular. No, and, okay, no. I had a great marketing team. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cleopatra, the podcast about two Middle Eastern queens digging up the funny from the first generation experience. I'm Lynn Molly. And I'm Christy Bana. And I'm so excited to introduce our guest today. She's been on Netflix as a joke radio, Sirius XM. She was a HBO Latino stand up comedy competition finalist. Ooh, Please yeah. give it up for Miss Gloria Elise Queen! Mora. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. I look everywhere, right? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, we, are we look, yeah, we're looking. I'm looking everywhere. Thank, Every you for, camera. thank you for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm good. I have no complaints today. What we'll do is just ask you about your background, like your parents, your family, okay. as far back as you want to go, if it's okay. an interesting story or meaningful to like your identity or your person. So this go yeah a lot well, of people start yeah. with um their parents how they met but yeah. could even go back to grand well my parents story is a little messy okay um <laughs> from what i know so i'm dominican first generation dominican born and raised in new york city so that's why i'm a little bit more like assertive and aggressive but you're from new jersey yes you're west coast but you got a lot of east coast i, got, I do have a lot you of got, you got that east coast blazer <laughs> like <laughs> I know you be doing litigation. Um, but I'm from New York, born and raised. Um, Dominican, so proud to be Dominican. So the community I'm from, Washington Heights, a lot of people, they always associate Dominicans with the Bronx. Because I think, like, when you leave New York, you realize the rest of America doesn't know, like, your story and your life. But I'm from Washington Heights. So a lot of uptown New York. And my parents are from the Dominican Republic. I think this is a story that my dad told me. I don't completely remember because sometimes I don't listen to my parents. <laughs> but my dad told me, I hope I don't put his shit out there. I think he <laughs> married, right, he married some lady. Like, one day we ran into her in the elevator in the building. He's like, oh, I used to be married to her. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> he was married to some lady, whatever. Boom, 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 not my business. But the way that my, my, <laughs> then my parents, he used to work at a bagel shop in New York. H&H bagel was like a big deal, mm -hmm. like in New York. Um, and I think that's the name of it too. But he used to work at this bagel shop, and I think one, I think he met my uncle like at, at working there. And one day he invited my uncle invited them to like a family get together, and he saw my mom and my aunts, and he just liked all of them. Mm -hmm. But he, my mom was the lucky one, so <laughs> that's how I got here. And um, yeah, so my parents are from Dominican Republic, and I forgot the rest of the question. What was it? Wow, that sounds kind of like the plot of Hamilton. <laughs> What's that? Is that a book? Because <laughs> I did not read it. The Broadway <laughs> musical. Oh, part of Hamilton. I'm gonna have to watch that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Hamilton or the part of Hamilton. 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 Oh, like I, I know, I know yeah, Hamilton. Yeah, I know yeah, Manuel Manuel. Miranda. You know yeah, Washington yeah, I you, Heights. I thought you said the part of Hamilton. That sounds like a good book. Uh, like one of those true. books you gotta that read does. in AP history. Oh, yeah, but. <laughs> yes the plot, plot. the plot yes. yes i don't read ap history oh my books, god but thank you yeah. for no i was I, do. I was in ap history for two years <laughs> yeah i failed but i was in it i mean um but yeah that's the story of my parents i forgot the second part of the question how they met and how that and how did they come here oh how did they get to, that was it i don't know i don't know the story you know my parents i mean how did your parents get here before i put my, my parents business out there uh, a plane. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. My parents came on a plane too. I don't really. I, I don't oh, know. Everyone's so watching comment. I don't know if everybody in my family got. I think everybody got the situation. Like they're residents. I think my dad got here. He married somebody, and that's mm -hmm. how he got here. Um, and then married my mom. So that's complicated. And my mom actually, my grandparents. They left the Dominican Republic early. They left them like when they were, you know, young. They left them up back there in the, in the country. And my parent, my grandparents came here through plane as well. And they kind of like set the foundation so that my mom had could get here. And I guess how I got here. That's okay. a story. Maybe I should have asked them more information. <laughs> but that's I don't want to give too much. I'm first generation. They obviously immigrated here right. and they got the paperwork situated. Right. And now I'm considering the legacy. This is not an yeah. ICE interview, I brought. No, what do, you, what do you mean it's not nice? <laughs> an oh, ice. an ICE. And I, I was You're like, like they have papers, they have papers. <laughs> no, I just meant like what, what motivated, like, so for example, my oh, girl, dad. You, you got to get clear. I was like, I'm um, sorry. they got paperwork. They all no. got green cards. But it's okay. You're it's right. fine. No, it's sorry. Hilarious. That was my bad for yeah. not being a little more specific. Like my dad came here in the 70s when there was a doctor's shortage. He came here to be a doctor. Oh, that's deep. And he was a doctor and then he, you know, like he came here to, 
do his residency. So that was kind of like the pull okay. that brought him to America. Okay, so back in the 60s, when my grandparents were in the Dominican Republic, there was this dictator, Trujillo. Mm. And after that, the country was kind of like in shambles. So they literally, there was like a program and they came here. That's such a better story, bitch. You should have set me up. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like uh, no. I like, think it was misleading when when you said a plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, um, they got, I, got ner- I guess I got nervous. You know, it's not a, I, it felt very icy. I was like, oh my God, who else is in here? No, but um, my my <laughs> grandparents came here. They came here for a better life. Like that's why right. they came here. That's why they instilled in me, and I think that's why a lot of my comedy. I've been exploring a lot of like, you know, we're women of color, right? So like sometimes we like to do shows that celebrate that. So I have a show that celebrates Dominican culture. Obviously, like I try to integrate my. I have so many other shows too, but like this show is special because like we don't have a lot of Dominican comedians. So they like they integrated this work culture, this. Um, giving back to the community culture so that's a really big part of like my comedy obviously like I talk about a lot of things but being bilingual is super important to me so I think I'm just continuing and I'm actually exploring that in my comedy right now continuing my grandma's legacy Mm -hmm. I say like both of them my grandma my grandpa like of entrepreneurship and like really we came here to get you know to get the family in a better position so I guess I hope that answered the question. Better. Yeah, that better? absolutely did. Okay. You said they were entrepreneurs. What What did they do? So my grandfather worked at the Sheraton. Mm-hmm. But at night, and I, it's so funny because I, I think sometimes when you're exploring like a content piece of your comedy, it just comes up everywhere. After he would get off work, he would do, I don't know how to say it in English, but he would sell like juices in the streets. Yeah. Like, called frio like, fríos. Okay. Yeah, like, so like. You, agua frescas? Or no, not, something agua, else. That's the thing. I'm also learning about the Mexican community here. I know I'm Latina, but ah, there's so much. Okay. And like the West Coast is very like Latin, like Mexican oriented and the East Coast is more like Caribbean Latinos. Right. So I came to bridge the gap. But it, I guess it's an, ex- it's not agua fresca. It's more like these tropical juices okay like he had Ooh. specific recipes so like after mm-hmm. especially in the summer he would go and sell them you know in the projects all over new york city and i used to be really embarrassed like when i was a child like oh my god after school like you're seeing me with my grandparents but now that i'm an adult i'm like they were hustling old overtime you know right. like you know we always used to stay at the sheraton for a discount like i'm pretty much uh heir to the sheraton so Harris <laughs> Hilton needs to move over. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm an heir, but yeah, that's that's why my parents, my gra- my parents and my grandparents came here for a better life as I think all immigrant families do. Like, you know, and I I think I'm making them proud. I hope so. Um I love that back then you were embarrassed of them making juices and I feel yeah. like now if you made those same juices and you were like by a Dominican woman they would be right. like at Erwan. What right, yeah. old but I would have to add alcohol to my juices. <laughs> yeah, I would have to do that. I think people have always taken interest in like subcultures and I think now more than ever like a lot of people are really looking into like how what how are other people like surviving and doing culture and like you know it's always a question of like appreciation appropriation so I think people are interested in that. And I feel like it probably would be at Irwan. Like, yeah. you know, legendary. Just but out of curiosity, because you mentioned Dominican um, comics before, can you shout out a few names just so oh, we can Oh, absolutely. Follow them? I'm cool. going to shout out the whole lineup for my okay. show. So you're going to New York Comedy Festival. Yes. We're going to be there next week. And me and my best friend, Sasha, we created a show called Mori Soñando, which is also a drink. It is a, um, you put milk and orange juice in the morning and you make, it's a drink, but it's also like a, uh, it has like a two meaning. What is that? Double entendre? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, double entendre. I also I'm still learning English, <laughs> but um, it also means doing that, great, right? Thank you so much. <laughs> I didn't know how to speak English when I was a little girl. Wow, yeah, wow. I didn't. But now my Spanish is fucked up. But I didn't like <laughs> everything is all self taught. Um, but the drink is Mori Soñando. It's a, a drink you drink in the morning, but it also means die dreaming. So we created the wow. yeah. So we created this show to showcase this show because it's the first time we're bringing comedy uptown. I don't know how it works regionally and locally in, in L.A., but, you know, there are places where people like to stay. So, like, in New York is downtown for comedy or Brooklyn. Right. But we don't have a scene in uptown New York. That's where I'm from. And I'm like, well, that's my legacy. Like, that's the place that created me. So I want to bring a show uptown. So we partnered with this huge theater, the United Palace, to do an all-Dominican lineup. So Ooh, we have yes. Ida Rodriguez, Ian Lara, Gaspar Monte, Julio Diaz, who also was on Netflix as a joke. Mm. Um, he did the in the video, like the in the, in the festival. I think I know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's amazing. Him. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's amazing. But yeah. I kind of came up with Julio. Um, we have Sasha Mercy, D Nasty, myself, and what Mr. Nova York. So we like to, what I like about the show, and I'm sure that um, you also experience this in Europe, I like that we're like, 
intersection. Like, there's so many different types of Dominican artists artists out there. So this show is so diverse in in thought patterns and thought process. Mm. So I'm really excited about that. And experiences. Yeah, and experiences. Yeah. But, like, I just feel like everyone wants to, like, lump Latinos or Dominicans into one experience. And I, I always I have a joke called Dominican imposter syndrome where I never felt Dominican enough. Mm-hmm. But that's because it wasn't a representation for, like, my version of my Dominican experience. Right. So I think this lineup is great because everyone has, everyone loves their culture, but they also have their own experience with the culture. So I'm excited about that. Cool. So I think my grandma would be really proud of us. Yeah. Clips on WhatsApp. Congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's going to be so fun. Well, I your there. parents be there? My mom is gonna. My mom goes to all my shows. Like Amazing. she's in the Dominican community. She's becoming a local celebrity <laughs> just, just by being like the everyone. Like somebody said they were at a show with my mom. I'm like, w- don't be bringing my mom because now I gotta take care. Like I have my own like brand of like let me make sure I'm behaving <laughs> and now I gotta make sure my mom. Now I gotta check. Like she's like <laughs> Tina to Beyonce. Like she. Mm. I don't know if you saw. Like Tina just did an interview for the Sherry Shepard show on behalf of Beyonce. Like, that, I can see my mom doing some shit like that. <laughs> right. So and they're like, excuse me, let's yeah. get on message here. Right. I'm like, first of all, that was not approved. Cease and desist. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I'm so, I'm really excited for the show. And the community is excited. The tickets sold out. We didn't even get to properly promote it. We put, like, two pictures up. And one of them was, like, a bathroom photo. That I'm like, let me just put it up. And it just sold out. So I'm like... <laughs> People are really excited. It's just never been done before. And I'm sure, like, with your shows and the shows you produce, like, people are excited for that. Because, like, we get to gather in community spaces and not have to. I'm not saying that I alter myself for certain rooms, but, like, I get to explore other topics that maybe might not be as appreciated in, like, more mainstream rooms. Like, of course. I have a joke about my aunt making fun of my Spanish. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and I talk in Spanish. And it's great to be able to really do that joke even though that joke hits everywhere which i'm still trying to like figure out why so the joke is um every time i come around my aunt she always makes fun of me for not speaking spanish i'm like i do speak spanish just not to you bitch <laughs> and i say i can't say that in spanish so she's right <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm, on a, right, I'm on a podcast like i didn't set it up right because you know like when you no, give like, your but jokes but it's a it's a funny joke and i think people like it it hits in every room so i'm like but I think in, like, my room, it's, like, more specific because I'm, like, talking about, like, things right. that are nuanced. But, again, I do jokes for everybody, but it's, I like to celebrate this. This is really special to me. So, yeah, not a lot of people, and, you know, we don't give each other uh, ourselves enough credit for what we're doing, right? Like, doing stand-up and producing shows and producing a podcast and having a nine-to-five, like, we're not giving, like, I work so fucking hard, and I had to start looking at myself and be like, bitch, you're doing a lot. And you don't really give yourself enough credit for the things that you're doing. Like, I have a whole full-time job, and, like, it's a lot of deep work. And even that in itself is an accomplishment. Like, that already is boom. Then I'm doing comedy, and I'm learning, like, nobody, I don't know about you ladies, but, like, nobody said, I didn't know I was going to be a comedian, right? It was just something that I got, I got so tired of, even though I'm back at a a (laughs) full-time job, but now on my terms, I got so tired of, like, the marketing industry that I just told my boss, suck my dick, and I was, I was unemployed, and I was like, I need to do something. So I started, com- that's how I started comedy. I was like, this, this has always been in the back of my mind, but I never saw someone like me do it. So can I do it? Like, I've only, and no shade to white men, love white men, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I've only seen white men doing, like, in the mainstream, we're comedians, so we see everybody. But right. when you are on the other side of the consumer, you don't really see. Like the people. highest levels. Yeah, like, you don't see people, you only see, like, legends, and then nobody else. And there's, like, so many different layers of comedy, like, I'm not a legend yet, but, like, I'm still out here in the streets. I feel like, am I titty showing? Because I feel like my titty. I mean, whatever you need for views, but I felt, yeah. No, but. Yeah, like, I went and I learned everything. And I'm now learning, like, really learning the industry. I'm like, oh, I can understand why I piss people off. Because I didn't know there were fucking rules, you know? Like, these are just things that you don't know. Like, I I just tweeted. I have a private Twitter account where I just vent in peace. (laughs) I'm a public figure now, so I can't just vent anywhere anymore. Right. Um, But I tweeted. I was like, I can't believe I was inviting people to my open mic shows. Like, back in the day when I first started, I was like, come to my open mic. (laughs) And it's like, I would never do that now. Like, that's not the space to do that. But I didn't know that, you know? So I think now, like, where I am in my writing process, I used to shy away from, like, I didn't want to be too, like, I didn't want to be um, boxed into, like, just being a Latina comedian. Yeah. Cause, and, there, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the route you want to take, that's fine. Like, but I do like exploring different, like, so many different topics. So I think I want to be more universal. So I did used to shy away from that. But I'm like, part of my comedy, as I'm writing, I'm like, I have to, like, actually address this because this is who I am. Like, there's, that's, pe- that's what people want to know. Like, as a Latina growing up in New York City, why are you the way you are? So I'm like, 
it, it, it makes it is part of my comedy now. And I think that joke with my aunt is really what's starting to explore. Again, I have a weird writing process. I don't, I'm not very linear. Like, I mm-hmm. can't, like, sit down and be like, today I'm going to write a joke. And this joke is going to take me to this joke. It's more like, okay, I'm going to plant a seed. I'm going to go live my life. And then it's going to come to me. And then I'm going to I'm gonna make it a joke. So, like, when I started talking about my aunt, I started realizing, oh, my God, there's so many points and I think like when you, that's when you know a joke has legs. I'm like, there's so many other points I can address. Like, you know, the living room experience and dressing up for the holidays to sit in an apartment. So it is part of, it is very much part of like who I am. And I'm really owning that now in this space of my comedy. I think in the beginning I was more like, let me just be like, you know, topical and whatever. I'm like, I'm not one of the, I'm just not like, that's not my kind of comedy. My comedy is very self-centered. So I feel like we all had yeah. that experience when I started too. I was like, I don't want to be the ethnic girl and that be my right. whole thing. And now I'm like, why did I not want to be who I am? Right. And then you realize something that I'm realizing now is that you'll do a lot of these mainstream rooms and sometimes they will discard you. Like, well, no, nothing, no reason. There's just no reason. Maybe like, you know, you did what it's a, it's a business at the end of the day and they will discard you and you realize the community that you impact the most are really the people that are, no matter where you are in your career, they're going to just continue to lift you up. So I'm like, it's really important for me to, like, to nurture that. Like, every, like right now I'm in a weird place. So like, okay, I'm moving across the country, but, like, I don't really know nobody. And, you know, what does that mean for my, like, my comedy career is in New York. That's where comedy is. Obviously, you can make shit happen in L.A. too. Um, but I'm like, I just, feel, I'm in a weird place. And I'm like, when I look back to, like, the people that supported me is always my community. And that community, I have a large community. Like, it is Dominican. It is, you know, white women love me. I don't know what to say about that, but them bitches, you know, they be propping me up. So I'm like, I have to nurture the people that prop me up. And sometimes that's going to happen outside of certain clubs or like traditional comedy settings where it can be very bro culture. And I'm not going to keep trying to, like, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to always try to do the traditional route, but I'm not going to beat myself up if I can't be in the fraternity. Like, they, like, a lot of people like to gatekeep and, like, be, like, to themselves. And I get it because people are weird. But, yeah, I just... I, I'm a very, like, I'm not going to shy away from where I'm from. Because I'm not, like, no I'm not a regular comic, you know? I, I'm i just living it. I feel like I like to say I'm delusional, and I like to keep it there. Don't don't tell me about what's going on. Like, let me be in a bubble. So, and that's, that's been really helpful for myself. Because if you, st- if you stop and look at the things you're doing, you're going to start overthinking, and you're going to start, like, really, like, comparing yourself to other people. Or you could just be delusional. Like, oh, my God, everything's working out. And then just let that shit take you where it goes. It took me to L.A. I just did Netflix the joke by being delusional. I used to Photoshop every single, like, month, like, a Netflix special. And then it happens, and I'm like, well, it's a it's a radio, so it's, like, a baby version yeah, of, yeah. like, what could mm-hmm. possibly happen. But I'm like... I'm still like soaking that in. Like I haven't, I haven't really put, po- you know, I'm obnoxious on the internet. I haven't even posted it online. Obviously there's other things like I don't want to offend anybody. Like even though it's, you know, we got permission to do that, but I'm like, let me just wait till everything passes and really like blow this shit up. So yeah, it, to answer the question, being Dominican is important. But it's great. Right. <laughs> the I question the was, is being works. Dominican yeah, it important? Is, it is. Yeah, that was the question. But I also enjoy like something that I learned about doing a lot. Like in New York, I get this experience to do rooms and, it may be places I would have never been in. And I don't know if you know um, Zuby, a man. She yeah. has a show called Cootie Kang. Yeah. So every time I do her show, I'm like, yo, like, I feel really good after I do the show. And I didn't realize that there's a lot of, like, intersectionalities and um, similarities in our culture and upbringing and, uh, like, how strong our parents are. So it actually makes me feel good to, like, explore other, like, even doing this podcast of, like, there's so many places where we are connected and have so many similarities. Yeah. So I'm like, I love, I also love doing that too. I'm like, I got to do a collaboration with her. I got to, I got to do that. Cause it's like, there's like the brown community and I get a little iffy about using that word. I feel like brown means it's more for Middle Eastern, but then I learned that in, no, I think it's for, it's for everyone. But I learned that in LA, Latino people use brown too. And I have a lot, like I just, I'm a, I'm a worldly person. So I have a lot of friends and I respect everybody's ident like the way they identify themselves. So I think brown in New York, it has always been like, hey, this is Middle Eastern community. I don't know. There's just so many terms and shit. But anyway, I try to be pers- respectful of that. But I think as a brown community, everyone that's a, or brown adjacent, we have a lot of similarities, especially in the comedy game. Like, I'm sure we have a lot of similar experiences. 
So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And let me know if I'm rambling because, no, like I said, I get comfortable with the podcast. This but is... I want to know about you, guys, like you ladies too. <laughs> like I don't want to just I will... no, no, no. I okay. mean, this is no, this is. I promise you that. Okay. Like one of the reasons why we're letting you talk too is because we answered the same questions on previous uh, oh, okay. episodes. I, I want to make sure because I will. No, every you're, time I go on people's podcasts, they're like, great. "Damn, bitch, you took over the whole podcast." You know how to, <laughs> you're making our jobs so easy. It's okay. Great. That's what I'm I saying. I mean, that's why you also. It's clear why they brought you to LA. Oh, that you know, you. you clearly have. I uh, love. I love talking. I mean, I you're really, really fun to watch. Like, I, I connected with you immediately because I just was like, okay, I like her. And I told, I told my manager, I'm like, I need to book. I know that I, I fucked up the dates. So I was like, I got to book her because, you know, every, people don't know each other. But like, Christy, I want to book her. You know, he's like, oh, I don't know her. I put her on the radar. Bitch, you putting her on the radar. So okay, amazing. Thank I'm you. Like, <laughs> one thing about me, like, I love putting people on. Like, I really do enjoy, like, the comedy community part of it. Yeah. It's just difficult because comedy is a very opportunistic, very self-serving career. But where I am in my comedy career, I want to connect with people that can potentially be, like, in a I want to be in a writer's room with them. I want to do, I, like, creative projects with them. And right. sometimes you don't really know who to trust in comedy. Because I'm so, I'm a nice person. Like, I, will, I, I do. The answer is no one. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> No, but like you all, I used to be like that too. Like I used to be like the first couple of years, I would never hang out after the show. I would just be in and out. But then like sometimes you'll see people hanging. I'm like, I want. I, want, I know, I want no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Person. Obviously, I wouldn't have started a podcast okay, if I didn't trust like, anybody. Like, Let's put that imagine up. Imagine if you know? I was like, this is the last episode. You no, know, no, no. But like sometimes you do want. Like it's really nice. Like comedy is not all just comedy. Is the culture right? Like the culture of comedy right. is like it is the craft. It is the things that you do adjacently to the craft. Yeah. But it's also the friends you make. It's like connection. The, yeah, it's like, connecting with your audience, connecting yeah. with their culture, connecting and, and with the, yourself. The real like, like when I meet, like there's some people I meet. I'm like, you're a fucking bitch. I would never want to be around you again. But then you meet people that are like, this is my kin. Like if I was in men in elementary school or middle school and I was friends with this bitch, my life would have been so much easier. That's how I know like I have friends. Right. That those are my. That's like the people that I consider my friends in comedy. Of like. If they would have been in my life earlier, I wouldn't have been a comedian because I wouldn't have had trauma because they would have been in my life. So, um, yeah, yeah, comedy is, I have a love-hate relationship with comedy, but we all do, right? Like, especially in L.A., this shit, I'm not going to lie to you, I see why people are, like, miserable here. The, it's, yeah. the stage time is tricky. Tricky, bitch, it's, <laughs> there's no stage time. So now, now that I'm writing, I'm like, because when I'm in New York, I'm always up, so I never yeah. have time to, like, let me write this joke. I'm like, I'm always up. So I write from the stage, right? Which a lot of people, you know, they got their like pure, whatever they think, whatever. But when now I'm here, I'm like, oh, I'm ready to get up. I'm like, oh, this shit is an hour away. Yeah, I'm going to see y'all in a month. I'm I like, mean, or you can write your joke in traffic. Like, do you have any voice memos and like text to myself I send when I'm just driving? Because like, that's that like makes, that's the what element. it is, yeah. you know? But we're from the East Coast, so we're not good enough at driving. Yeah, I don't do even that. drive. I oh, take an Uber. Oh, that, that's true. You yeah. take I work on my set in the back of the Uber. <laughs> um, I always say I'm gonna be better about being a better creative. I just always write the set on the way to the, the show. But I'm like, or if I have a big, sh it's only like when I have a big, and I'm being like super transparent. When I have a big show, like when I did the HBO thing, I was like, I'm not gonna go out there and embarrass myself. Like I'm gonna go write. Of course, this yeah. Like when oh, yeah. I have big shows, I'm like people are watching. I like really, I'm like that's how I should be operating all the time. But I just don't have, I don't have the bandwidth. That's why I'm like taking it a little <clears throat> bit easier in this phase of my right. comedy career. I feel like the first phase of it was like. I need to be res I need to be taken seriously. And then you realize that sometimes you can be working like in a little hamster wheel. Nobody gives a shit. Right. So I'm like, let me work smarter. Let me like I don't have to exhaust myself to be a great comedian. How long have uh, you been doing it? Only five years. But you got to think about it. I was up every single day. No, I, that's a lot. You're yeah. talking. I've been like I've been on stage years, like two thousand times. Like wow. I know. My, you just can't get that in L.A. Yeah, I, I feel like in L.A. I've been on stage four times. <laughs> but I feel privileged because I wasn't even, like, looking for... I, I really honestly came to L.A. with, like, no expectations. I was like, I'm going to just chill. No one will know I'm here. I'm going to be so quiet because <laughs> I pissed everybody off in New York by calling myself a legend. I'm going to be a nobody. And within a week, someone from Netflix hit me up. I was like, oh, my God, what the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck? Bitch, I was screaming in my I was screaming in my apartment, subletting. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> um, I did jam in the van, long time no yeah. see, like all these shows that I was like, 
Okay, I, like I was like realistic. I'm like, it's gonna take me two years to like get to do this show. Like you know, you make goals. I'm like, I'm okay. I'll do you know, I'll wait two years out to do this show. I know there's a line of people, and it just it's all. Ha- it, it's Are you all a happened. manifester? Are you like one of those? It's, I will say. Is that why are you pho- photoshopping all the Netflix? Yeah, like okay, I mean, yeah. I do it. Sorry, I burped a little bit, guys. Um, <laughs> I did it. Sorry, shout I, out gas. Yeah, shout out to gas. Um, <laughs> like to think. I'm not gonna guess. lie to you. I, I was reading some of the questions that I was preparing, and there was a question. There about secret talent i have to start admitting i think i'm psychic oh wow I really, but not like okay. not like for real like i'm not gonna be able to do like your tarot cards so okay. i might be like making shit up i don't know but i just have a really good intuition mm. like i don't know how to explain it like i get feelings about things i'm like like everyone's like don't go to la i was like no my body is telling me to go to la like wow. i feel really tapped out and exhausted and i'm not like the most important thing for me i never want to be a bitter comic like i want to be fun i want to have fun like i did this to get rid of like i was over a nine to five in structure right but i'm learning that that shit is the same shit in comedy like it's the same it's like corporate but like more palatable hr shit like that's really what comedy is like when you want to make it to the top like you got to be like pal- palatable hr whatever but i i do manifest like after like right now again i'm a maniac i'm working on my 24 2024 agenda like i scheduled okay. every month and how i want to feel each month and my three i always say three goals like i i plan my comedy career the way i planned applying to college so you know your counselor is like okay you have three you have a reach school mm-hmm. that is like you might not get into harvard mm-hmm. which was the case um <laughs> <laughs> then you have your you know the school that you are probably going to get into um which was syracuse and then your like safety but i didn't apply to no safeties i'm like i'm not staying <laughs> in the hood no shade go to whatever but i'm like i don't want to i know that for me, the way to grow, you have to leave your environment. So, like, being in L.A. is expediting so much growth, right. especially as an artist, because I was very, like, when you're local in a big town, you still think the world revolves around you. So, I was like, I'm doing comedy like I'm in New York. But then when I came out here, I'm like, nobody knows no, they don't know what the right. Heights is. They don't know what Dominican is. They don't know this fucking train. Like, they don't know any of that stuff. Right. And the lifestyle is so different here. So I'm like, I have to, like, learning the lifestyle of, like, broader America is making my comedy so much mm. better. Like, I went to Buffalo, and I was like, okay, these jokes, these little, like, regular jokes, I got to step it up because they want to hear shit that is, I don't know, I don't, like, I have to talk more in bigger umbrella terms. So, like, I've been really focusing on, like, the airline experience. That's, like, the, when comics start going on tour, that's how you know, when they talk airline jokes, you know, they made it to, like, a different <laughs> level. That's how you know you're in a good place. I'm like... I have a joke about skipping white women when I make the line because, you know, what my credit score, whatever. So that's always that makes me feel good. Um, <laughs> oh, like, like in the like premium elite line or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So I'm like, I know I'm making my grandma proud because I skip all the white women in global <laughs> entry. And like, that's like fun. You know, I like to play with like class experiences because I know like a lot of people, they'll see me and they'll be like, oh, they probably have like certain projections. I'm like, no, bitch, I went to college. I had a six-figure job at one point. Um, I don't want to talk too much about that. What did you study in college? Communications and entrepreneurship. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah so I'm like, I was preparing for you this You taught life. the class. Right. <laughs> no, they're, they're going to name a, a classroom after me, which is big. Because you know them schools were racist back in the day. So I get at least a classroom. That's a, I, I that is a get, big deal. Yeah, I don't know if I get huge. the yeah I don't know if I get the whole building. Like Carmelo Anthony <laughs> has like a whole thing. You'll have to buy the building. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm not gonna do that. I'm cool with the classroom. <laughs> like I'm cool with it, the Glorelli's classroom. <laughs> so yeah, I was I went to, so like, it's just nice. I like to play with um, identity in that way of like I know you have these projections of what you think I am, but it's like bitch, I'm better than you. So like I like doing that in like white rooms. I that's loved great. what you said about um, never being bitter because I feel like that's a something that comes from such a place of like white privilege when people like we're so lucky to be on set like I could be in Syria in like a war torn country not allowed to speak like I'm so excited to be here sometimes you don't think about that right like I met a comic recently and she was telling me that she has to change her name Mm -hmm. to be able to perform and I was like oh shit like I I don't want those problems you know I didn't even think like you don't like as a woman the shit that we're doing and talking like we like a lot of people don't have that privilege so I'm like I think for I think bitter can be a little bit different though because I think everyone can feel bitter sometimes and I'm I'm not gonna lie and I'm not perfect. There have been moments when I where I you know when you're doing your you know you have like a plan for yourself and I'm like you sit back and you're like am I jealous 
ill. Like there have been moments. Right. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. lie. Like every artist has. There's a mo- no comedian that doesn't have moments of yeah. envy or ju- like just jealousy. Of right. Something. But then I realized I've lied so much on the internet. I should not be jealous. Like I, everyone's lying. You know. So I'm like, I'm not gonna be bitter. I'm not gonna. But it's 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 easy to fall. Like there's your mind can go really really positive or really really negative, and it's really easy. I catch myself of like. I catch myself sometimes being like upset and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and I, and I have to let it go because if not, it's going to eat me. I'm like, I can't care about this. Whatever happens. Like I, I'd be telling myself like little whatever yeah. words and shit. It's a hard balance, but because like on the one hand, yeah, we feel so lucky we get to do this, but then there are people in positions of in, insane power saying you should be lucky. You're just lucky to get scraps from the table. And, and, and it's a yeah. balance between like knowing your value and knowing what you can bring, but not being entitled. And I, I always find that to be a huge tightrope because I am still in that phase where I'm like, oh, I'm just so happy to be here. But I also like realize that I, I sometimes tend to downplay what I'm bringing to the table as a result of that. And then people see that and they're like, yeah, you sit the fuck down. You sit the fuck down. I, I sometimes get my hands slapped because, you know, I have a, a really big personality and whatever. And I'm like, you know what? When I are you going to show that to us? Oh, you said Sarah, that's you? I'm saying when you, it, it really, <laughs> baby, kidding. it really is delusion. Like, but you have to understand, it took me a lot of loss to get here. I lost my dream job. I lost the guy that I love. Like, I've lost a lot in life, so I truly don't give a fuck. I give enough to Kate stay employed, because you know, I still got to pay these bills. But if these bills weren't here, I would be reckless, you know? But, like, I truly don't give a fuck. And especially, like, I've been through so much as a woman, as a daughter, as whatever. So I had to really, like... My mindset is at the end of the day, if I feel mistreated or uncomfortable or disrespected, I I am valuable. Everybody is valuable. You have to understand that we are part of a business. And, and it's fine. If you don't want me part of your business, I know what I bring. I know you can try to recreate it. I have a lot of people that try to copy me. And I say that so humbly because like, like, nobody's like, idea is so like original. But I'm like, I've brought so much to the New York City comedy scene. And I've seen people that I thought were my friends take that and be like, thank you for thank you for giving me this peace. I'm like, oh, bitch. You got the wrong bitch because you're going to see me at the top again because you don't know all the people. Like, I don't show all of my cards. Like, that's not the way you play the game. I don't know how to play poker, but I heard you're not supposed to show you, like, your cards or whatever the fuck. I don't show all of my cards. I say, hey, I'm going to give you a little bit of this, like, of myself. I see how you act with that. I'm going to remember that. I'm not going to tell you today. I'm a, that my petty is a decade-long petty. I'm like, okay, I'm going to let you win. But see me in 10 years, bitch. You know, like Drake be saying that shit, like see me in the future, <laughs> yeah. whatever. It's like shit like that. So I'm like, I had to. I think like with comedy, and I think we're all kind of like in the same in the same space. Like I, I'm five years in, but I have enough like experience. I still have a lot of work to do. So that's why I don't like like. That's why I came over here to kind of like fix that. Like I, you know, we talked about in the car. I'm like, yeah. I need to be a better writer. I need to tell better jokes. I need to actually like. What I've been getting away with is, I wouldn't say mediocrity, but I know how much better I could be because I haven't even tapped into my real stories because I was just surviving. Right. I was just trying to get respect. And now it's like, right. okay, I got that shit. Let me actually stand on this. But I just, I don't want anyone to feel unvalued. I, like, I felt like that so many places where I'm like, I should be so lucky to be here. And I am. I'm so grateful to be passed at so many great clubs, but I'm not going to allow disrespect or like, I'm not going to be, a, I'm not a yes woman, right? Like, at the end of the day, I am the talent. I am the comic. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to put up my boundaries. And it's the same way, like, in, I'm learning this now, like, even in relationships and in friendships. I'm like, I'm going to tell you what's okay. I know that I have to compromise. I get it. It's a game. But I'm not going to allow you to at, make treat me like I'm not, like, I don't mean anything to you. That is such a nasty feeling to feel as a comic mm-hmm. where it's like, damn, like, I have to go through these ropes to get through where these legends were. But now, like, the greatest the greatest thing about... I'm not saying, like, rely on the internet, but I've seen so many of my peers, like John Marco... I don't know if you know John yeah, Marco. John yeah, John Marco. He created an entire... He's someone that I'm, like, looking up to. I mean, I always looked up to him. I'm like, I really admire what he's done. Like, he's created a whole universe around himself. And he can... And now he can go anywhere. So that's kind of, like, the the place that where I want to be where it's like you can let someone else decide where your career goes or you can take ownership of that mm. and I've decided like I want to take ownership of that like I don't I I still respect tradition I still want like girl of course I want to be like past the improv or I'm not going to be like don't you know whatever but I'm also not going to like sit and wait and let somebody like decide that for me I'm 33 you know so I'm like <laughs> bitch I need, to have, I need to have kids in like a few years so I'm like I need to figure out like what I'm doing and that's what I, I've been planning I'm like how can I 
you know, if this thing happens, great. But how can I still be happy if it doesn't? And I think that's where I'm at. And it takes it takes a lot. I'm not like I hate like I say bitch a lot. I hate bitches that be like, oh, everything's great. I'm not an everything's great person. I'm more like I choose to be delusional. Mm -hmm. I know life sucks, but I chose this. Right. I'm telling you, that's working for me. I don't wake me up. That's kind of like where I'm at. I'm you're always, adjusting your focus. Yeah. Like you see the negative, you see the downsides, but then you're I also like, I'm going to. everything. I see, <laughs> and I feel it. And you're like, I have been in my apartment like crying, like, oh my God, why did this happen to me? I feel like whatever. And sometimes some it's hard, especially when you're, uh, I hate saying the word minority. I need to like say like underrepresented community, but it's like the shortcut, whatever. When you're a minority and you're in like a lot of these mainstream places, you feel like you're, like you're supposed to like have so much gratitude, but you forget that you're a talent too. And I think I was I was dealing with that. I was like, okay, is this racist? Or am I being overly sensitive? Which is such a hard conversation to have right. with yourself. Because Especially you, in comedy when right. everyone's like, oh, it's a joke, you know? Yeah, because sometimes like people truly, like it's truly not personal. But because we have so much, like I have so much insecurity of, you know, my race, all of that stuff where I'm like, yo, this shit feels really racist, but sometimes it is business. Mm -hmm. And I like to be like, okay, I I hear you with the business, but if it's business, it's business. I'm going to take my business elsewhere, you know? So I just don't want anyone that is a person of color to feel like they are, they their worth is, is tied to something that they cannot control. Because I have been there. Like, I think a lot of comics of color have been I there. Mean, yeah. And you just have to keep like, like there are so many times I want to stop and cry, and I have. I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to just keep going. I'm gonna just <laughs> and keep, I will. But And I will cry. <laughs> but I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to keep going because I know that I have this feeling in my heart that I have to see it through. And that's what I'm saying. It's bigger. It's bigger than comedy for me. Like, it's really like, it ties back to like my grandparents and my right. parents. Like, it really is about really seeing that dream come true for my grandparents, for my grand, like whatever, everybody. You know, now my niece is really like a motivating factor for me because I really want her to feel freedom in whatever spaces she's in. So I'm like, I'm going I'm to figure this out. I'm going to keep doing this. And even like I was looking at like moving to L.A. has been really hard. because I'm like, now you're balancing living here, but how expensive it is. Right. And I'm not saying that like I'm in like the worst financial situation, but like it's cutting into the budget. Right. It's, it's, it's cutting into this is worse than New York. It is for me because I have to take an Uber. Like, okay. I can't get around, like, the train. But I was spending the same, right. like, literally, the issue that I had with New York is that I didn't have enough time. So I was spending for, like, a hundred. I was spending, like, $100 Ubers to get, like, I wasn't making money because I was spending money to get to the show because right. I live so far. Now the issue, the Ubers are here cheaper. But now I got 10 places to go. So I'm like, right. it's literally the same math. So for me, I'm, I just was kind of like beating myself up the other day. It's I'm almost like, like the cost of living is untenable. Girl, everywhere. 100%. I said this inflation shit. It's <laughs> gotta almost stop. like public transportation is no longer serving us. Yeah. I wish that I wish that California would invest in yeah. a great um, transportation system because it could be the greatest city in the world. Uh, it, it still belongs to New York, but I heard something about how the the transport the transportation system was deliberately um, fucked up here. Like yeah, because yeah, they yeah. wanted yeah. Cars, cars to prevail, yeah. And oh, I saw that on TikTok, so don't don't quote me just in case that is wrong. But that's I saw that the, that's the lore of LA. Yeah, okay. That's pretty, yeah. Yeah, well, they, it's lore. not just the lore. It's like for real. Yeah. It used to have <laughs> things called red cars uh, way down back in the day, and like they they ripped them up. They don't exist anymore. What are red like cars? What are red just cars? like there used to be like a trolley system in Los oh, Angeles. I would love that. <laughs> bring that back. Toot toot. Yep. I would love a trolley. <laughs> I really love an aerial tram system. Uh, they need that because yeah. the traffic is not cute. Mm -mm. They gotta fix. It's mm -mm. just so much traffic. Live in Disneyland. Um, yeah. So <laughs> speaking that. of the cost of living, despite all of that, like what what's like at least something like a luxury item that you won't make an exception for that you like have to. One thing about me is I've been I've been broke. I'm talking about when I started comedy, I I was telling my friend I only had enough money to get coffee and maybe like a bagel, but I was fine because I needed to lose weight anyways. But it didn't work. <laughs> Um, in New York, you can subsist. Yeah, that. you can like that's that's, yeah. that's breakfast, anyways. Yeah. Rich or poor, that's what you eat. Yeah. But one thing I always had money for was drop off laundry service. I haven't done my laundry oh, in like ten years. Okay, yeah. like I can't even I sit. In, I can't even sit in front of a. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> a, what is it called? Uh, the shit that you uh, do? Like a washer and dryer? A washer. I can't do <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't eat that's it. My, the most bougie yeah. amnesia I've ever yeah, heard about. I, I can't what, even you, sit in front of one what of those. Is it? I can't. Like, and I found a service here because I'm staying, I'm subletting in my friend's apartment. And it's really not like, like I said, I grew up poor. So like I've, I've seen a few roaches in my life. 
But I'm like, this is not gonna work for the love. Like I, I just <laughs> you live in if you live in New York, you've seen riches. No, I've seen, I, that's rich I've seen ro- the last apartment I had that had a whole rat family in there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mm-hmm. I've seen rodents. <laughs> I've seen pets. sounds like a great sitcom. Yeah, a no, rat family right. but living in your apartment girl. specifically. <laughs> I, I'm sure every New Yorker already thought about that idea, girl. I'm like, let's <laughs> other New Yorkers like rat show. I'm like, girl, you're not no. But um. <laughs> I'm subletting a place that's not really up to like where I want to be right now. Okay. Even though like I'm not like at a level, I just need I just need like a few amenities. So I I'm like I'm not using for sure for sure. I don't care how broke I am, I can't use this washing machine. So I found like a service that does um they do drop off. It's not even wow. that. Yeah, I, love that. I won't name them because I'm not sponsored by them. But I've been getting my <laughs> yeah. laundry done. Yeah. yeah, it's been cute. They pick it up, they drop it off. I'm like I need that's one thing. I don't care how broke I am. I can't. I just don't want to do laundry. That reminds me. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by my right hand and my left hand when do my laundry. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm like, just- oh, we got sponsors? <laughs> you should have told me. Okay, so now it's time for uh, our final segment. Uh, it's called Dig Deep. Elizabeth Taylor famously portrayed Cleopatra in the 1963 film. If your life was a crossover of uh, two TV shows or films, what would they be? Who would play you? Only two shows? Oh sure, yeah. Can no. I do? Can I do three? Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm like, oh my, God, my life is <laughs> no. I would do sister, sister. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. charmed. Oof. And Lizzie McGuire. That's so, like my brain. Do you have like Ooh. big sister energy in your life? I'm a big, I'm a big sister. Okay. But I, I like, I love Charmed. I grew up with that. It was one of me and my sister's favorite show. And I don't know, like I have been. Like I, there's like a I have a, a a line before like you know the Sabrina series it got yeah. a little too dark for me I was like I can't do that dark but I do like like magic shows and shit like that like I watch Harry Potter every Christmas you know I haven't read the books but I watch this, <laughs> I watch the movie every year um, I'm gonna read them one day I'm I'm so behind on pop culture but those are the those are the <laughs> it's not pop anymore it's no, it's 15 years ago but, but I'm behind I haven't read them I got kicked out and that's gonna tie into the other that's question. like my mom like saving stacks of uh, Vogue from like 2006 for the makeup tips I'm like that's not <laughs> but it's you not jo- in you season laughing, anymore but that shit is coming back it's true yeah. no that's true and them art them magazines gonna be worth a lot of money you know <laughs> but if I I don't know who would play me I'm so chaotic. Um, also, she had Stanley Tucci play her, so you can. Yeah, think it doesn't have to be. I mean, I feel like Rih- Rihanna has guess, been like your sort of do- doppelganger a yeah, little bit. But she's Ooh. so famous. Would she? Would she even be down? You know, absolutely. What I'm I love Rihanna. Well, I this think, is a fantasy. So, like, oh, so like fa- I don't oh, know. I don't know Stanley Tucci personally, oh, and I haven't pitched this to him. I was pitching this to Hollywood. You never know who's watching this. That's why I got to get an answer <laughs> right. I'm like, oh my god, just in case Hollywood tunes in. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have. <laughs> they're they're actually calling in right, right now. Right. This isn't live. <laughs> there's this there's this girl. If we watch Never Have I Ever, yes, yes. I love I that lo- show. Thank you. Finally, yeah. I've been trying to watch this show with other people. Nobody. I love that show. Sorry for the tangent. I love it because it's a great way to incorporate her culture without making her feel other. It's not preachy. Yeah, she's a regular oh, bitch that right. prays at night. Like boom, that I'm right. sure that was a log line. You know, regular bitch that prays at night. Um, <laughs> but I would like, I don't know the name of the girl that plays um, the robotics girl. Oh yeah, she's so yeah. cute. Oh yeah, yeah she, she could, plays the character Fabiola. Because yeah. by the time I, I get, yeah, Fabiola, by the time is. I get famous, she'll be, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be 60, she'll be 30. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be working at this for a while. But mm-hmm. I think like she, I love seeing her because like we have the same kind of features. It was really nice. Um, so I'm going to go with Fabiola. I got to right. find her real name so she could be casted. Amazing. Yeah. Um, she would be great with her hair curly. It's gonna be so cute. This podcast, right? yeah. And yeah, you said yeah. she does a podcast. Yeah, she should. She's very. I'm telling you, you gotta be delusional. She's gonna watch the episode because yeah, you're gonna put it great. in the SEO. She's like, why my name coming up? The Glory Boom. biopic. Yeah, and yeah, that I'm show done for is that. literally the show that if it existed in my childhood, I would have liked. That's myself. what I'm saying. I'm still honestly, I'm still develop. I'm a teenager. I'm still developing. So I watch these shows. I'm like, am I supposed to be watching? Um, what is it called? Young adult, like they. What is it called when they develop whatever? Coming of age. age. Coming of age. Oh my God, thank God y'all speak English because my shit is bad. (laughs) (laughs) I am still watching Coming of Age because I literally am still growing up. I don't actually, I would like to push back and say that I don't think we ever outgrow a type of coming of age. Really? Because like, people be making me, I guess I've been no. talking to my more like mature friends. You're always like, reparenting yourself. You're always trying to give, being an adult is giving yourself what you didn't have as a child. Exactly. You're always working on yourself. We're all works in progress. That's really, thank you. I also read somewhere that the reason we attach ourselves to these high school shows is because high school is kind of like the universal experience and what happens after that 
that is so different yeah for everyone that's like the one place that we can all watch together and be like this is and our I, experience as i'm meeting people in la i realize like a lot of their growth like we're from the east coast right so like i've i've been exposed to so many people and so many like realities and so many like oh so i'm so understanding i'm like okay like i get that but i'm having a hard time here because people are not used to like people having like a range of emotions it's either like i'm put together or like really mad and it's like <laughs> no like i i literally i'm having a bad day today but i'm gonna be back tomorrow like i think it's just mm. it's just really hard for me to like I, it feels kind of like um, pleasant feel, but like Instagrammy. That's what right. LA is giving me. Like, no, it's like that, that makes sense. Yeah, like they I think you're exposed to. You have so much more exposure to different types of people in New York. Just you have to yeah. be exposed to that. Like on I'm, the subway, I'm, just walking down the street, you see all different types yeah, of people every day. But I'm like over here. I think like the ranges are not really allowed. But I I feel like it's because of high school. Like I think when you go to high school in more like I guess these type of cities, like it's very like click and like like teenage drama but in new york like we're literally like like fighting every day and in the hood and like <laughs> there was guns being brought to my school like it was a lot um but yeah i don't know like i'm still outgrowing the high school i guess person and i always say you can tell what kind of comic you're gonna be by the person you were in high school mm. really I was <gasps> yeah well I was prom queen as well, oh, bitch, and really? I don't think wow. we're even the same. <laughs> but we okay. I was like joke. I think everyone voted me prom queen like as a uh, as a prank. No, it was, they did it on well, purpose. I was never once asked to a dance, so I feel oh like I God. am like standing between royalty. But that's a, that's a cousin. <laughs> Two Middle Eastern no, can, prom queens. But think about the stories there. Like you know, you could be that's a rom com. Yeah. You know, they had never been kissed, never been asked to dance. You know, like you need to do. That, uh, but to be fair, to make sorry, you were prom queen because you were popular. No, and, okay, no, I had a great marketing team. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the day me and my friends were like, okay, it's it's senior cut day, and that's when everyone puts their ballots in. Like we're gonna feed everyone. We're gonna make sure everybody has sandwiches if they vote for me. So like everybody wow. voted for me, and I was plastering like photos of Rihanna. Like it's the same. It's deja vu, but like right. an adult. Someone reminded me that I I was hanging up posters of Rihanna. Like vote for me. That's so like funny. I've been the same obnoxious person since high school. So I don't know. There's something there. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I want to say everybody wins their things differently. I won because the marketing was good. Mm. But she's also, I deserve to be prom queen. You yeah. know? Yeah. I didn't campaign. I always say this. I was like, I wasn't popular. I was populist. I was very much like, like you know, Evo Morales, the president of Bolivia. But and like, I think people were like, yeah, she's a nerd. I see myself in her. Let's let's vote for her. Let's vote for her and not these like skinny white bitches. Like, that's was, what I thought what, what I, was going on. I think that's fine. Yeah. Exactly. You're different. That's fine. You need to. I be. Mean, I'm gonna talk to her. I, like you're so. Because me and Christy is a Virgo. Virgos are so mean to them. They could be famous as fuck and be like, I'm not good enough. You are amazing, Christy. Thank you. You won because fuck them white bitches. That's why you won, and you're gonna keep winning. Because now them white bitches. I'm in my 30s talking about being prom queen. And, and doesn't it feel great? <laughs> are we being healed? I'm healed it's, right now. This is why I love you so much. Is yeah. we have such different opinions on what this means. <laughs> what, what, did, it, did it trigger you? For me, I was like, No, it's not true. It's just to me, I'm like somebody talk, bragging about being prom queen I can know. be like so sad. But for you, it, it's like not sad. It's actually like, you're right. This is me being a mean person to myself. Because when I see you doing it, I'm like, oh, she was legendary from the beginning. No, but I be lying. I've been delu No, I've been delusional since I was a kid. That's the, that's the through line. I'm like, I had to create my own reality because life sucked. So I've been delusional. And I'm like, I'm going to be prom queen. Fuck these bitches. I didn't think I was going to win. There was a prettier girl out there. Crystal. Oh, my God. She was fucking gorgeous. <laughs> she was she was a leader. Of, we used to have, like, cliques, whatever. And I'm like, you know what? I don't give a shit. I'm going to win. I'm going to put together. I mean, I did lose. You national. Tanya Harding, the, the Crystal <laughs> campaign. Right. I, I did lose the, um, I wanted to be president of National Honor Society. I did lose that. And I never let that go. I never let that go. Some other bitch Gloria won. <laughs> I said, they voted for the wrong Gloria. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never let that go. I was supposed to be valedictorian in middle school, too. Never let that go, either. I'm competitive, you know? But we have to unpack what this means. Because I'm like, prom queen is like such a... That's, <laughs> that's, my, that's my real credit. Bitch, Ooh, I was, on, I was I love prom that. queen. Could you imagine, though, like, your next comedian was 
prom queen at Walter Stewart Middle School or like you know what I mean like what's so funny but that's what I'm saying I mean like I know a lot of Virgo comics that they're just like you have to play by the rules and we cannot bend them and you give me you give me play by the rules I don't play by the rules I'm like who the fuck said that who said that why what are these rules that people make up you know and I had a conversation with a comic I really really look up to and I I was talking to her one day I was like oh no I'm obnoxious like you can do whatever you want. Like, you don't have to. She's famous. You got an Emmy. I don't want to name drop. <laughs> but she was like, you can do. Right. No, I will credit drop, though. But she has. She was like, you can do. No, Don't listen to these rules. Do whatever the fuck you want. Like, I think sometimes people are waiting for permission to be like, oh, I have to. I need to get to this place before yeah. I could be obnoxious. Why can't you just celebrate? Life is short. You might not get to where you're going, you know? Like, knock on wood. Not, this is wood. <laughs> Anyways, you might not get to where you're going, so you should just celebrate. Like, obviously, you know, I think the internet has created a culture of, like, lying too much. Like, I lie because it's my comedy. Because it's like, why do you believe everything I post? But then it got to me to place. I'm like, oh, my God, now everything's true, so I can't lie no more. But I was just lying from the beginning. I was like, for the longest time, I would use this credit. Like, I didn't have a credit. Um, I was, I said I was an extra on power. Like, no one's going to fact check that. They don't got cable, whatever the fuck. So I was like, extra on power. <laughs> and then, like, it, me and my friend have a joke about it. But it's like, I was like, wh- the, I had to learn. I was like, okay, this was getting people with stage time. I'm going to just have to make up a credit. Fuck this shit. But, you know, obviously, you know, play the game your own way. Um, I just think you're too hard on yourself. I appreciate that. And we're going to work on that, that all year. That is the theme of Christy Bana. I love it. Too too hard on myself. Mm-hmm. Bitch, that's a double entendre. Like, if you play with it a little bit, I'm too hard. <laughs> we, can, we can play with that. That's fine. I go hard. On myself. Yeah. Uh, we have one final question okay. that did Lynn's going to ask you. Did I answer the questions? You. Oh, you absolutely okay. did. Okay. And you're just, you're a dream. M- oh, my only so sadness is that, like, that we we're time. wrapping up. I'm sorry. But no, don't, don't be yeah. sorry. I'm just, like, I could talk to you for, we like, do a part two. 10, ten, ten. We should okay. do a part two. We're yes. going to do a six-month check-in and see if Chrissy's still hot on herself. <laughs> <laughs> because you got to oh, I'll save you the trouble, sweetie. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert. She's still hard oh on herself. Oh, my God. But why? Before we leave, why? We don't have enough time for why we have, but you you know what? We will talk about this in part two. Perhaps I'll get asked to a dance between now and then. <laughs> no, bitch, I'm gonna throw a whole party for us. We're gonna have, we're gonna dance, bitch. Okay. Sorry, I don't know. I, I hope you dance. dance. I yeah. hope you dance. <laughs> oh, we gotta put this clip up so we could be our dating profile. It's gonna be great. <laughs> she's in a very, very much in a, very much in a 10 year relationship. <laughs> he didn't ask you to dance yet? <laughs> no, he has, but okay. it's just never a school dance. Oh, well, you know, that's a little late cute. for that. We, no, it's never school Let's recreate we'll, we'll, a school dance for me. Yeah, we'll figure it out. There's an yeah. episode of Sex in the City based on that where they like oh, recreate yeah. a prom. Anyway, every, every great TV show has like a prom episode, like Throw to Charm, where they went back to prom. But okay, let me, <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. So, um, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to be remembered for? Or. Oh. What will your epitaph read? And what's that? What is epitaph? Like mean? your headstone, your gravestone. Oh, that's scary. Oh, that's kind of like you it know, doesn't have to be that. Just like I, what's I feel your like Matt just died and he was asked that question. I was like, oh my god, please God, I'm not ready. Right? Okay. okay. No. What's your legacy? My legacy is I want people to stop waiting for permission. I feel like if there's anything you take away from my comedy is you have to just really be confident in whatever you do. Like you, this imposter syndrome, just get it out of your mind. Like everybody is lost. So I want my legacy to be like I helped other people to find freedom in expression. So like I was like, you know, when I think about my my life, I'm like I was a domestic I'm a domestic violence survivor. And I was, it was really hard to leave these self relationships sometimes like, you know, leaving this relationship. And I think leaving and comedy really gave me so much power where I was able to tell men to suck my dick. Because, you know, I know, it's a very vulgar. But I, th- I feel like that's why I enjoy, that's why I have fun in comedy. Because it's the first time I'm free. And that's why I get annoyed with all this business shit. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this stuff. But it's like, it's the first time that I get to just be, I get to own my narrative. I get to be free. I get to just, so I went to suck, like, to fuck off. Like, I've done everything I possibly can to people please. It's not working, so suck my dick. That's going to be the mm. name of my special. Suck my dick. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe not. I'm working on... I was going to actually call it Prom Queen. But <laughs> you should. It's so, you should. No, it's... I'm working on... I got to figure out, like, what the story is before I put it... Like, I really want it to mean something great. Yeah. So, like, my legacy is that I helped people to feel like they didn't need permission to do whatever they wanted to do. And that everything they do... So, like, legendary is more... When I was calling myself a legendary comedian, I didn't think... It was because I wanted to be the Beyonce of comedy, but someone already had that name. So I was, like, asking myself, what makes Beyonce, legend, like, a legend? Mm-hmm. Before I was calling myself a legend, I was like, people love her work ethic. You, They love her consistency. Like Virgo. You, 
That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you can say whatever you want about Beyonce, but she has had a very strong career for the last 20 years, and all her competitors fell off. You know, she didn't even have competitors. Like, that's kind of like, I want it to be that in comedy. But I was like, okay, somebody has that name, and I was like, what makes her Beyonce? What makes her Beyonce? I'm like, oh, she's a legend. She's a living legend. Like, her work ethic speaks for herself. Right. So I think that's kind of like why Legendary was born, and... I, I piss off a lot of people when I call myself legendary comedians. Like, you got to work to get that. You can't just call yourself that. And I was like, you shouldn't even know who I am. I'm a fucking one-year-old comic. You shouldn't know right. who I am. But it got, and yet you're paying attention to yeah, me now. Yeah, that shit ran through the words of comedy. And, you know, so I, I dropped off the legendary comedian. Now I'm just legendary, you know. Because I don't want to put too much pressure on myself in case the special sucks, whatever. It's not. <laughs> but Legendary is about, like, every day is truly a gift. I'm not even trying to be, like, all, like, mumbo jumbo. But it is a gift. You just don't know when your last day is going to be. You know, life is short. And everything you do, being alive is such a legendary experience. Mm -hmm. And you should make that whatever you want it to be. Like, you're going to die one day. So I was having an existential crisis when I when I started doing comedy. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to die one day. And I was like, okay, fuck it. I, might, I am going to die one day, but at least I got to live life on my terms. And I think that's really the, the legacy that I got to do for my grandparents and my parents. Because mm -hmm. they didn't get to live their life on their terms. I get to decide what my life looks like now and make them proud. So that's like, like a full circle. Yay. Yeah, this was our most inspiring episode. Really? Yeah, that? absolutely. I love I love talking. Like, you're I amazing. Yeah. I have a quick follow up question because this is something that I get in my head about too. Mm -hmm. Where like when I made the big jump from being a full time lawyer to doing comedy, it was very much like a YOLO. Like I'm gonna die, and very soon if I st keep doing this, you know. Mm. But my struggle is like when you talk about like being delusional having that kind of faith in yourself what of credibility like what of the idea that you don't want to be written off as a crazy person well you know i hear you right but part of the delusion is like being safely delusional right so like i never was lying like when i was like i'm like i am gonna drop a special i just don't know when right but that's the plan so like i would always say like oh i'm working just a special or like i'm gonna be at madison square garden i never li I, I didn't lie mm -hmm. you you just don't have comprehension skills i can't give you a date so right <laughs> i'm like I never are you sure you're not a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I could have been right, but look, look at the judge. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I could have been a lawyer. I would, I would have been, I would have been out there. Like, but you know what's so funny, Christy? Every time I think about, every time I feel like I'm doing a set, this I might, do, this might not, you know, be great. But I feel like um, El Woods in that scene where she's <laughs> finally starting. She's like, wait, you did what? So like that's how I feel when I'm performing. It's like the thoughts are coming to me, mm -hmm. and they're like making sense and i'm solving this thing so maybe i am a little bit of a lawyer yeah but i'm like i never lied like you're the one that lied because part of marketing i gotta you know i'm really good at it but that's because i had a the person i had a manager that went to yale and he taught me like just working under somebody like changed my whole brain like he taught me so much and part of marketing is like you don't want to outright lie. Like, I don't want to... Like, I think the power thing was, like, it's not verifiable. I could have easily been an extra on power. Like, there's so many people that work on that set. So I'm like, I can't get in trouble for that, right? But, like, I never, like, lied and said I was passive. Like, I would never lie and be like, I'm at the cellar. Like, right, not right. because that's verifiable. But I'm like, I have been past a lot of clubs. I have... I am going to drop a Netflix special. I am... I don't even know what the other lies are because they all came true. Like, it's, like, <laughs> shit that I'm, like, I'm already working towards. Right. So when I drop it, it's not a lie. And I think that's what's, like, helped my career. It's, like, I've always been, like... So when I drop the Netflix thing, it's, like, oh, like, that shit is gonna... It's gonna fuck people up. Like, oh, this bitch... <laughs> this bitch is crazy. But, like, there's a... It's, like, a... Don't be too crazy to the point where it's, like, you're actually lying. It's more, like, hey, this is what I want for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm working towards. But it's also, like... I don't know how to explain that, but that's also my brand of comedy, like just obnoxious. Right. And like, you know, like I'm going to be at the garden one day. Everything's legendary. Everything works out. But it's like people that know me know that that's just kind of like right. the brand. I guess the answer is like be delusional, but know that you can achieve that goal in five years so that it, it wasn't a complete lie. Amen. Yeah. So thank you so much. Beautiful. On that yeah. note, what, uh, where can people find you? What would you like to plug or promote? I have a podcast called Girl, Let Me Tell You on Me Too. Um, and you can find me online, Glorelis Mora, and I'm just on their line. Or manifesting, <laughs> you know? Catch the, catch the entertainment. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. I've been Christy Bana. I'm Lynn Molly. I'm Glorelis. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Cleopatra. Bye! Bye.